Hello and welcome to episode 44 of the Smash Ultimate Modding Workshop. In this episode, I'll be showing off how to edit the path of a projectile, the visual effects, and the hitboxes. I've made this mod, which replaces Luigi's fireball with this flare looking thing. The height at which it goes to before dropping is determined by the Y position of the control stick. Holding up when it's summoned causes it to go about this high, holding down this high. And nothing is a nice middle between them. Now to explain how I've made this mod. First off, the hitboxes. Hitboxes work pretty much how you'd expect. Once you've found the correct script to edit, you can just add or edit the hitbox of it, like you would any other move. If I wanted to, I can make it do less or more damage over time by adding more hitboxes after frame identifiers. I haven't done that, so I'm moving on to how I change the effects. These two Luigi FB bullet effects are just the vanilla ones, but I've made them 60% of their original size, and then changed their color with this last effect set color line. The arguments are simply R, G, and B. 1.0 is kind of equal to 100% opacity, and you can actually exceed that. I'd recommend searching for examples of the macro on GitHub to see how other people use it in context. Next, I summon this common cis aura dark effect and change its color to red 10 times. This is to make the glow effect that you see around the base of the projectile. Cis aura dark is a pretty unobtrusive effect, so that's why I summon it 10 whole times. Lastly, how have I changed the path of the projectile? Well, this is actually a status script edit, but I think it's a lot easier to just write a script from scratch, so this episode won't showcase any status script rewriting whatsoever. If you think this makes enough sense to you once I'm done, and you want to dive deeper into status scripts, I'd highly recommend it. Either way, let's cover this piece by piece. This first section is the pre-status script. It basically just sets a few flags to tell the projectile a little bit about how to act. For fighters, this controls stuff like if a move can be B-reversed. Note that these scripts use a weapon instead of fighter, so the first argument we pass into this function is weapon.modulaccessor. This argument, the kinetic type, I've found just controls whether the projectile can move or not. If you set it to weapon kinetic type normal, it can move. If you set it to weapon kinetic type none, it can't move. The next argument is the more important one, the ground correct kind. This determines how the projectile acts upon hitting a wall or the ground. The main ones I've found to be useful are ground correct kind none, cliff, air, and ground cliff stop. What I've chosen for the mod is none, which makes it so the projectile doesn't interact with terrain at all. Cliff is similar, but the projectile gets stopped by walls. Air and ground cliff stop are pretty similar to each other. They both cause projectiles to be stopped by walls or the ground, but if you still have the projectile moving, it'll slide along the ground when it hits it. The difference between the two is what happens when the projectile reaches a cliff. Ground cliff stop makes it, guess what, stop upon reaching the ledge. Air causes it to ignore the ledge and slide right off. If you wanted the projectile to, say, blow up when hitting the ground or wall, you could set it to ground cliff stop or air, detect when it touches ground or wall, and transition into a blowing up status, which will play an animation, summon a hitbox, and kill the projectile. Moving on, we need to declare the main status. The main status runs once at the beginning of the move. What we need to put in here is a motion module change motion, so that projectile has the correct animation. It takes a BOMA, the name of the animation, in this case it's regular, because that's the script that I added to the hitboxes of. This argument is the frame that the animation starts on. Good to edit if you want to cut starting lag off of a move. Note that if you're transitioning from an aerial to a grounded animation or something, you can use motion module change motion inherit frame instead of having to do anything more complex with starting frames. This next arg is the speed of the motion, higher being faster. So 1.0 is normal, 2.0 is 2 times speed, 0.5 is half speed. These next arguments you shouldn't really have to touch, but I'll explain. This one might be related to how the motion loops, but we don't know 100% for sure. 
The next one is like the frame that the hitboxes start on, and then the last two are, as far as we know, unused. Last thing we have to do in the main status is just transition into the main loop status. For fighters, we typically use fighter.subshift status main, but for projectiles, it's typical to see weapon.fastshift. Luigi Fireball Start Main Loop is the name of the main loop function, so that's what I put in there. Lastly, and in my opinion, the most fun part about this, the main loop status. Main loop runs every frame of the status, which is really important to know. It's also good to know that the main function we'll be working with is SV kinetic energy set speed, which we can find at the very end of our status. This is a special kind of function, so the way that it takes parameters is a little different. It works with the battle object stack. I go in detail about how stacks work in episode 28. Firstly, we clear the stack to make sure no other parameters accidentally get passed. Then we'll push the type of kinetic energy. For projectiles, just keep this kinetic energy as is, as there's not anything that you can change it to. For fighters, you can use fighter kinetic energy ID control for control of the character, or fighter kinetic energy ID motion to edit the general speed of the fighter fighter kinetic energy ID gravity to edit the strength of gravity, and then you can also use fighter kinetic energy ID stop to halt all momentum. Next, we pass in the X and Y components of speed. I think what's a little hard to understand about this is that we're not editing the position of the projectile directly, but actually the velocity of it. So let's say I wanted it to follow a specific parabolic path. You wouldn't use the equation for the parabola, because that would be the position. You wouldn't use the first derivative, or the velocity, because we'd be adding velocity every frame. We would actually need to use the equation for the second derivative of the parabola, or the acceleration of it. Last thing before I actually explain this code, we need to go through all of these declarations. We can get the BOMA of the projectile's owner with this line. This is used so that we can get the position of the control stick, since we technically only control the player and not the projectile. We'll also get the direction the projectile is facing, which will come in handy in a little bit. We'll then get the x and y components of speed, but the function to actually get us that speed needs the type of speed to, to get, so we need to declare that as well, which is just a normal projectile speed. You can think of speed as always acting the same way, Positive y is always up, negative y is always down, so that means that positive x isn't forward, positive x is always right, and negative x is always left. x and y speed can change every frame, but in this script, the projectile will always have a constant acceleration and a constant max speed. y acceleration I've set to negative 0.1, I'll explain why in a bit. x acceleration is dependent on which direction the projectile is facing. If it's facing right, it'll be positive 0 0.04, and if it's left, it's negative 0 0.04. We've also got max speed to define, so we'll use the same structure for max speeds. It's the closest thing you can get to a ternary operator in Rust. It just declares a variable as a different value based on certain conditions. I like using a max speed, as accelerating to that max speed, even if it only takes a few frames, feels a lot more natural than instantly going to a set speed. This is very important for the y speed. If you would think about how a projectile would move in a parabolic arc, the x speed would stay pretty much consistent the whole time, while y speed would start positive and decrease, reaching zero at the peak, and then it would be a decreasing negative number till reaching its maximum negative speed. The best way to achieve this is by having a constant negative acceleration, which we have, and declaring a positive velocity to start out with. That's why we get the status frame, which allows us to declare an initial speed, which we can change based on the position of the control stick. This firmly guarantees that the initial y speed of the projectile is between 2.0 and 3.0. If the control stick is fully down, it's negative 1.0, which sets this to 0 and causes the speed to be 2.0. While if the stick is all the way up, this is 2, this is 1, and the total is 3.0. 
Lastly is how we add speed every frame while staying under the max speed. We'll get the absolute value of the current speed, and only if it's less than the max speed is the acceleration added. That's about all you need to know about projectiles. You can replace this code with just about anything you want. You can make a projectile follow pretty much any path you can think of, if you know what you're doing. I'd say the way to learn about this if you want to do more of this is parametric equations. There are basically two functions that define one graph, one for the x and one for the y, each with respect to time. Super helpful for this sort of thing. Nonetheless, I hope this helped, and happy modding!